call the board meeting to order. We'll stand and be led in the pledge by Mr. Lawson. Good evening, um, members of the board, members of the school district. Thank you for letting me speak tonight on the work that has been done since my official start date on July 1st. I hope that this uh, presentation will provide uh, some insight into where the school is headed, why it's heading in that direction, and. Um, the, the vision and, and scope of sequence for the short term and the long and the long term. I have here Vice Principals Melissa Siegel and Matthew Dotto here to uh, to chime in. They've been a wonderful part of this beginning process of change, and I really invite them to to speak elaborately as we um, continue on. So the first, um, I want to take you through my journey of my work with them, because I think that if you understand the journey and you're a part of it, you can sort of get, uh, see, see it through, through my eyes a little bit. And um, the first time I met with the admin team, my purpose was to get them to know me, for me to get to know them, and to set the tone. And we started it with the litmus test of how I do school, and that is the school isn't good enough if we would not be proud to send our own child to any NFA classroom or to the school overall. So with that understanding, we went on to talk about how we're going to work together. And I love to use quotes because they sum up very succinctly sentiments that can other, you know, that can be, that couldn't necessarily be expressed um, in this kind of way. So the idea is we, we are a team. I try to work to the best of my ability in a collaborative fashion. Um, even if I have to make a tough decision, I will always do it after I get feedback from my council. I don't think any single one person has an answer. I think a lot of people together have the answer. Um, and then the next thing was to really discuss the notion of excellence. And I love the Aristotle quote because he really says that your excellence is habitual. It's what we do. So everything we're going to do 
from here on out with school reform is going to be from the mindset of excellence. And um, to, to continue on that, um, the great expectations that I had, again, this was the first couple of days of getting to know the staff. Um, excellent staff attendance and punctuality. If we're not here, we can't serve the children. And that's when I say we, it's all stakeholders that work at the school building. On time follow-up with the deadlines, exhausting an approach or task thoroughly, never giving up on a child. Never giving up on a child. Um, and never giving up on a problem, always trying to see every possible angle. Effort equity, is everybody pulling their work weight? Um, having a half full mindset, really trying to see that, um, that there, everything could be, everything has a absolute solution and everything is to me always mostly positive and sunny. Instead of saying, well, we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do this, we can't do that. We will try to figure it out. We're going to do it. Collegial transparency and open communication. I think it's very, very important that as a team moving forward and as a school, we have to have open communication, even if we disagree. Even if people are upset or disagree or have angst, it's important for people to vent and have transparent heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. Problem solving before problem announcing. It would be wonderful if we can, as a mint team, come with very creative solutions if there is a problem. School classrooms, restaurant ready for students. The expectation that, again, working backwards from excellence. Everything 100% ready, on point, ready to go, no time wasted. Faculty and staff always modeling excellence and professionalism for students, including learning themselves, being lifelong learners, as we talked about. So the next thing we did was we conducted a self-inventory of the current school climate at NFA. And uh, they, we broke up, people broke up into, uh, into pairs and they brainstormed on chart paper. And these were some of the things we were asking um, about the current climate at NFA. And uh, the admin team got into a conversation. I also got into a lot of conversations with um, students who graduated from, from here just by driving through the, uh, a lot of the fast food places and talking to kids through windows. And then my own uh, data based on, my own analysis based on qualitative and quantitative data. And these were the top five findings of things um, so far. That um, the majority, according to grads that I spoke with, the majority of teachers are extremely well-intentioned and effective. Um, NFA grads said that you can have a great experience at NFA to stay focused, stay out of trouble, take advantage of tutoring programs. There's a critical mass of teachers who want change, who are willing to do what it takes to move NFA forward, and so forth and so forth. So we, so we got this, so I already started engaging the staff in self-reflection, which is part of Danielson, reflecting on practice. And then we talked about things that might need um, some, some changing. The, um, the, the, the learning environment in the school, um, of course, you know, I know that you know, gangs, gangs are an issue. A couple of kids said there was a bullying problem. Um, and uh, the, these, were the, these were the things that we discovered um, and, and talked about. So through those conversations and through analyzing all of the, uh, the data that I have from, from, from the state, from the most recent um, <coughs> regents' uh, data, and talking to all kinds of uh, school stakeholders, we started to talk about school reform or school restructuring in, car in compartmentalized fashion. Overall school culture, safety tone climate, instructional program, and external participation, parents, CBO. So just, just very quickly, school culture is our modus operandi with the way we do things at the school, and the culture is how the way we do things makes people feel or perceive um, uh, their surroundings. For example, the perception a visitor has within 60 seconds of entering the building. A person can sum up the, the ethos of an organization within 60 seconds of walking in the front door. What it feels like here is usually what's going on in the classroom. Um, the instructional program, what we teach, how we teach it, how we know our students are learning, how we hold one another accountable via data, how we plan outreach, how we grow professionally, and as a school, as a PLC, professional learning community. How we invite parents to participate 
and the support of their children to school, and so forth and so forth? How do we reach the families that are disengaged due to external factors? How do we harness the support of external um, organizations? So with these compartments, we proceeded to move forward. And we, and this is the chronological order of what we were doing. So the first thing we did was we, we agreed upon a, um, a clarifying vision mission statement for the school, something that was not present on letterhead, and uh, something that existed in a lot of verbiage, but it wasn't reduced to a single statement that everybody could just see very quickly. So we said, what are we doing? What is the work that we're doing 24-7? We are preparing students for excellence for college, career, and community, how to be successful in academia, how to be successful on the job, and how to be a, a civic-minded person, how to get back to the community, how to be a moral person, perhaps, or politically astute. So we're getting, hopefully, big banners, and, and, that's, and that's what we're working under. The next thing was making the decision to um, to ban the, uh, the use of cell phones and uh, electronics during the school day because it is extremely destructive to, to really getting the school to the next place that it has to be. And it goes for, for staff as well. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, to moving forward with this. And again, I appreciate everybody's support with this, um, with this uh, initiative. And I'm glad uh, to move forward with it. Strengthening the school student parent triangle. Um, then we decided it, was, it would behoove us to not only have the incoming ninth graders come for an orientation, but start the, um, the tradition of having all kids return at the end of August for a new school year orientation to get them reacclimated, remind them of their course requirements, just set the tone, and to check in. Um, so we're going to be having. Um, some orientations. One is two are this week, tomorrow night and Thursday night. Okay. Strengthening teacher buy-in. Um, I try to meet with as many teachers as possible before the school year to establish trust, begin building a professional learning community, and to conduct intensive uh, professional development on Danielson regular data, and also just to get a sense of the teachers' assessed skill level and all that. I was very pleased with the quality. I was very, very pleased with the turnout. We had 70 teachers show up um, during their summer vacation to these sessions without getting paid. We didn't have the money, but we were able to, thanks to Ed Forget and the district, we were able to award these teachers for their time um, with professional development credit. So I, was, I really was absolutely flattered that so many turned out, and I was flattered at all the responses I got from folks by email for the, for the, for the time. Matt, did you want to talk about what happened after that as a result? Yeah, um, an interesting thing that happened, and again, there was over 70 people, but some of the teachers came in a few, sessions, a few days later to, uh, I'll speak to the North Campus, um, and set up group of study sessions. Uh, so it, it, it kind of motivated them to, to come in on their own time they set up study sessions, they set up notebooks, so that they're prepared for the actual engaging on lesson plans and things like that. So it was kind of interesting because I asked them, what are you guys doing here? Usually they'll come in and you know, bug me about their schedules, bug me about everything else, but they're like, oh, no, no, we're here to study. So it was great to see that in addition to the fact that on, on, those, on that Tuesday and Thursday, uh, prior to them coming in, we had such a great turnout. So it was very successful. Thanks. We also decided that because um, of, the, of the Common Core Standards and the APPR and uh, the need to move the school forward, we also decided to order a lot of bulletin boards for the hallway because we need to start displaying rigorous student work, evidence of, of student learning, student work product. And this will have multi-purpose. One, it'll celebrate student work and student achievement. It will also get kids to see models of other types of outstanding work. It'll get teachers to examine their colleagues' practice, and everybody will get inspired from one another by displaying student work, really high-quality, rigorous 
student work that prepares students for the academic rigors of, of college or any type of post-secondary work. And here's just a sample of what it could look like. And this is just imagining that a history teacher planned with an English teacher and they're, they're combining their projects and uh, that they're, it's based on global history, how are the elements of, civ of ancient civilization informed our society's current state of being. So again, getting back to the walking into the building, 60 seconds, you're, in, you're walking into a building, you're there 60 seconds, what do you see? You want to get the feeling by looking at the school of what's going on in the classroom. And if you can walk into a building and you can see student work displays that have essential questions that are provocative and that require higher order thinking and projects that require higher order thinking and college readiness skills and you see it there, you automatically see what's going on in the classroom. It's evidence of student learning, evidence of what's going on in the classroom. So that's, that's a vision of what we want to have happen in, in each of the houses. Okay. Improving instruction by professional learning community. We want to <coughs> ensure that everything we do is guided by data. Every single thing. And by data, we mean just about every piece of information that tells us how we're doing as a school. Everything from attendance data, to course pass rate, to regents pass rate, to the quality of projects, whether they are from a regents bound core class, like living environment, or history, or English math, to any kind of class at all, um, visual arts, for example. We want to have very, very high quality visual arts um, programs that really engage kids in higher order thinking, doing analytical essays on, on art history and studying ancient uh, art, you know, study art from antiquity to the present and making connections from now, from, from then and now, and, and, and fusing that into the students' hands-on work with the art that they create in their, in their art classes, and so forth. Um, quantitative and qualitative, quantitative data, and then teachers meeting in teams by grade level to see how they're doing across grades and then vertically by department. Looking at student work, looking at student work and saying, gee, what can we tell about where we need to go in terms of instruction by looking at this piece of student work? And there's a wonderful tuning protocol for doing that. It's called Harvard's Project Zero, um, which we're going to be implementing when we meet as a, as a team to start looking at student work. I'm personally starting professional reading circles with the entire school community um, on latest instructional practice and folks can bring their materials and we can have all kinds of um, um, explored reading because we again have to model for the kids. We, even if, if we've been teaching one day, one decade, three decades, four decades, five decades, we're not done. We're not done. We're always we're always looking to improve our craft. We have to improve our craft because the times change and the way we have to teach has to stay for the times. Um, it's very important to, for us to have ongoing professional development, whether it's whole school or differentiated. Just like we have to differentiate instruction for kids, we have to differentiate support for adults. Um, targeting school improvement, again, via data, we want to create data reports, again, on every aspect of the school by all subgroups. The only way we're going to move forward as a school is by knowing exactly where we stand and facing that truth and moving forward by action plan. Graduation, diploma type, promotion, course pass rate, all that good stuff. And there's something that I wanted to, to share with you. And it's um, something that I had created in my last school that was phenomenally successful. Everybody in the city is using it now. Um, thank you so much. It's a, um, it's a color coded data system. I can pass it around. And what it does is it cuts down. Can you hold it? Thanks. Uh, it cuts down on the need for a child to, to see the, the guidance counselor sometimes. 
And what it does, it, it's, it's, it's a color-coded snapshot of student achievement. This happens to be by house, by house. So what this graduation tracker, it's a public tra graduation tracker has, is all the students' demographic data. It has their baseline academic data from middle school. It has their Title I status. It has all of those state um, required demographic inf pieces of information, whether they're also whether they are a special education student, um, English language learner. It has their, uh, their, their cohort, the date they started. It has the credits they've accumulated to date. It has the Regents exams they've taken and passed to date. And it's all color-coded, color because I'm a visual learner. So, when we hang them up, we take the kids' names off, and we have the last three digits of their ID number, and we hang it up, the kids go, and they go, am I green? Am I good to graduate? And it's phenomenal how effective just a simple, simple thing like this, and it was a fluke by accident that it became so successful, I was doing it, and a student came in, she goes, what are you doing, Miss Nobel? I said, oh, I'm color coding because I'm an art person and I need to see things in color. She goes, oh, can I see, where's my name? She goes, am I green? I said, oh my God, she said, am I green? Started a campaign, am I green? Are you green? Are you green? Are you green? Are you green? So that works so well and kids love it because it's a reality check. And not only is it a reality check for the student, because they start to get competitive, and that's okay, because if they look for their thing, like, wait, ooh, I'm in the yellow, that's not good. Um, they, they start to pick up their game. It also, when we hang it in my office, in a snapshot, we know a lot of information about the school. We know who's at risk for not graduating, we know how many after-school tutoring sessions we have to make. We know which content areas we need to focus on more just by looking at the colors. It's very phenomenal. It's just very small, and it's a very small thing, but it goes um, a very far distance. Um, the next thing we're, we're doing is uh, we're restructuring the guidance department and uh, youth development because I believe that instruction and youth development are yin and yang. You cannot have a phenomenal school without solid youth development support. So one of the things we're gonna try doing is implementing the elements of guided discipline. We made some counselor adjustments by house. Um, we're prioritizing our schedule to meet with the kids, but the most important thing here is the guided discipline piece and also the creation of the graduation tracker with baseline info that also includes the child's preferred learning style and interests. So if a child is struggling, a teacher is having a constant struggle motivating a child, that teacher can look up and say, you know what? Huh, that child uh, is a tactile kinesthetic learner. I see that he or she is into dance or whatever. And then find things that might be used to motivate that child. Just an idea. And then the next one, creating academic and behavioral contracts with incentives. And then um, another very important one, not waiting so long to see which kids are struggling and failing. Within five weeks, and even that is late, but five weeks into the um, school year, I already told the guidance counselors I want a list of any student who is already falling behind in any class. Five weeks in, not when parents come in, that's too late. <laughs> when parents come in, for, that's too late. Immediately, and teachers already should just immediately know every day which students are, are making it and which ones are, are starting to flounder. But I'm, but I'm working with the guidance department to make sure that we have this communication every five weeks. And there are gonna be action plans for every student. So the student knows that they're gonna sign a contract, this is what I need to do better, and then we're gonna put the supports in so the child can be successful. The child needs private tutoring. We're gonna get two students, perhaps seniors, for community service and so forth. We wanna have um, more student focus groups um, to deal with all kinds of issues, like anger issues or bereavement issues or any kind of issues. The kids need a, a, a place to talk. They can 
do this during lunchtime for the counselor. We can bring lunches in and kids can sit and have a safe space to talk about issues that are affecting them. Um, strengthening the college prep piece. We want to immerse kids in college exploration and career exploration the second they start ninth grade and do it, do it, do it more. We want to um, create a, um, I'm just gonna repeat it a little later, we want to create a parent community welcome center at NFA that has college and financial aid information for parents, for parents that do not have access to the internet at home or who don't know that much about the college process and, and need financial aid information, just a place, and that can eventually be run by students for community service, but this is something we're in the process of, of, of creating. Um, college lounge days and nights with NFA alumni panel. Get students who, who started college, maybe a year, two, three, four, five, bring them back and have them be with um, crystal balls for the kids now. Oh, if I was you, if I could go back, oh, you should have, you should really, you know, it's, it's tough out there. And you want the, the, the alumni to come back and motivate the kids with their newfound wisdom and so forth and so forth. Um, Matt, uh, do you want to, um, Melissa, do you want to talk about this? <laughs> um, we want to talk a little bit about, the, as a lot of you know, we have a Twilight program at the main campus. Uh, well, for both campuses, but it's all at the main campus. And one of the things that uh, we were looking at as we were discussing this all summer long, and I'm sure a lot of you in the room are in agreement with this, that you know, we need to look at that program and really focus on as to why it's there. Um, and one of the things we looked at is also the name. You know, Twilight right now for as many years as it's been around, it's always been a, a negative connotation to it, where it's, uh, you're, you're put on putting students in there because you want to deal with them. Um, that's not the reason why Twilight was created, but in addition to that, we want to make more of the program. And we were coming up with a name to get away from Twilight, and we came up with RISE, the Recovery Institute of Scholastic Enrichment, which what we really want to do is make sure that the students that are in Twilight, in addition to Twilight, we have a program where students can recover credits. Uh, Ms. Nodell is, is very, very focused on doing that. So, for example, as a scheduler, and some I met with you last week about scheduling um, with special ed. There's a lot of students that are, sit, are going to be sitting in classes this year that are take, might be taking two English classes, three math classes, because they're trying to recover that credit because they didn't pass. That's tough on a student. That's tough on a junior, on a senior, trying to pass all those classes for credit in addition to the Regents exam and graduate. So as Ms. Dolel said, we want to be able to reach those students ahead of time. Setting something up like this would assist that because now we are recovering credit with not, not necessarily during the day school, but in a program like this. So they're taking classes. They can be taking classes during the day. They can be attending the program in the afternoon to recover credit and be able to reach that graduation goal before they're struggling with taking three math classes, two you know, English classes all at one time. A lot of times what we do and what the counselors are really working hard to do is to really um, fill their schedule. So there'll be put students, right now, they'll have nine periods in a row, no lunch, uh, no breaks, and because they're trying to recover that credit, they're trying to reach graduation in June. So this would be a, a solution to that problem, or a part of the solution to that problem. Um, and it is not just because it's twilight and you're putting the quote unquote bad, we're not putting quote unquote bad kids there. A lot of what we're trying to do is to make sure that they're coming to school. So we're looking at their attendance, they're looking at their cutting classes, and in addition to that, they would be in this program and give them an incentive because they're trying to recover credits that they've missed before. So this would be an asset to them. Instead of waiting till junior or senior year and have a schedule that realistically they can't accomplish. So that's part of what we're trying to do to set up a program where it's, it, it, it's proactive, not reactive. I just think too that you know we're a community of non-traditional students and we have to make sure that our school is supportive of our non-traditional students. So when we have students that may go into the Twilight program for a variety of reasons, maybe because they're frustrated and they haven't been successful in our day school program, 
That's one of them. And as soon as they start to fall behind, as Matt said, it, it's very ambitious, and it becomes that gap becomes so large that students feel frustrated. They become disingenuous with, with school that they don't feel as though that they can be successful. They're proven, they've been proven not to be successful. So this would be an opportunity for them to take that big pie of 22 credits in the five regents exams and really take it piece by piece without looking at it and going, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. And we also have to realize that we have students who are really the breadwinners of the family. They may have their own families, to be, uh, their own families, period. So we are really in an economic downturn and our students are really feeling the effects. So if we can have students that are able to help support their family and meet their basic needs and be able to get an education, then we're really servicing not just that individual student, but we're improving our community by improving the education of our students. And then that way, that's how our community grows, that's how our community becomes successful, and that's how we retain local talent. And then we can go from there. So we really need a program that's going to be an asset for our students that are going to be lifelong residents of our community and strengthen them. And that's how we'll build our community. Also, there's a lot of students, many students who come into our offices and ask mm -hmm. to be placed in Twilight. Just understand that they're asking to be placed in Twilight because they're working there today. Because, as Melissa said, there's that families are dealing. So, if they're asking for something like that, that's something that we need to really look at. There's a need, and in addition to that, as we said earlier, the big component to this is that we're recovering credit. That's the most important thing, and we're doing it in a way where it's not overwhelming to the student, and it's, it's going to give them a chance to be successful and not being overwhelmed. And uh, one of the things we wanted to explore, and I, and I had mentioned this to Ed a little while ago, I have a state-approved program for a trimester <coughs> program, and it's wonderful for overage, undercredited students. Because one of my biggest concerns is that students age out, and they really f they, they lose an incredible amount of hope. So I don't want any student at the school to lose hope. So that's why I'm really we're, we're all trying to brainstorm together ways of meeting the needs of every single student. Every single student, a student for means to all the way a student that has to be the means for their, for their families. And really, that's why they're not at school. But uh, that could be a possible um, solution. Um, school, uh, school governance, community building, um, CBO involvement. We want to resurrect the, uh, the BLT. Uh, we want to have open forums for school discussion groups by various stakeholders. Again, we want to have the parent community and if they welcome center, I'm very, very, um, I feel very strongly about that. I think it's um, essential for the high school. We want to create an NFA peer mentoring program. We want to have the seniors um, who, um, who have uh, completed their work for the day go back to the school and actually mentor younger classmen who are struggling academically. Um, and I, that, that is a wonderful program that really does work. I've seen it. We want to work more with Orange County Community College. Melissa, you want to talk about the West Point piece? Um, this past year, we were able to be successful with West Point um, with our Progressive Academy. And our West Point mentor program was, was with our, and will continue to be with our uh, West Point cadets who were from the minority um, division of West Point. And it was very important for our students to see success in someone that is a little bit older than them, but not greatly older than them, where it could be attainable. And I want, it was very important for me to make sure that our students' mentors were reflective of our student body. And it was with great success. Our kids did community service with the West Point cadets. They were able to go to West Point to see what it felt like to be on campus, to eat with the cadets, to work side by side with the cadets. We worked with the Boys and Girls Club throughout the year with them. And it's just a great opportunity for our kids to be able to see success outside and inside of Newburgh. They need to know that they are the change vehicle for our community. They need to know that there can be success. And many of the West Point cadets are coming from similar backgrounds. And that's 
not exclusively important, but it is important because our kids need to know that, yes, I can, I can move forward. I can be successful even in a really tough situation. And they were giving them the tools to let them and show them through their experiences on their success. So the more mentors that we have with our students, the more it becomes to strengthen their character building. And what um, Maxine was saying earlier, academics is important, but it's also very, very important to strengthen their character, to, to build their self-esteem so that they can be or feel as though that they can do well in their academics. And when that's fused together, then we're going to really have a great student that, you know, I don't want to sound like we're a factory, but we are trying to create a great product, and our product is our student. And if we can be a, a place of business where our students are, that, that we become that employment agency, which we have done, we had advanced testing this past, this past summer, that they asked for students to work at advanced testing, which is in Campbell Hall. So all that becomes a synergy experience for us, and it builds our capability for our kids to be successful. Mentors are hugely important, especially during these economic times. They need to build, we need to look at different ways that we can build support and success. We do a lot of these things in our school. We, we have a good foundation. We need to strengthen and broaden that foundation and, and really see what's working so that we can see uh, our, us progress in all different areas like that. And that's that bottom piece, student and community mentoring programs. Um, it would be wonderful if down the road our, our students can mentor younger children on Saturdays, even mentor adults who want to go back for their GED. That's something that we're talking about. Thank you. So the next steps, um, we're, continuing, we're continuing to work jointly with the district to carry out um, our, our district's goals, our school's goals, under the uh, APR, APPR guidelines. We're continuing, um, what is that? Giving, I'm sorry, we're diving. I think I was thinking of swimming, when I, I'm sorry. D, the D is next to the G, kind of, I'm sorry. <laughs> Giving student, parent, teacher school surveys. At our orientations this week, every student and every parent is getting an environmental survey. They're going to be able, this is a series of 20 questions, broken down by school, safety, tone, and climate, academic expectations, communication. And it's just short 20 questions. Strongly agree to strongly disagree. We're going to aggregate the data. We're going to do an item analysis and see the good, bad, and the ugly and just have a starting point. We're going to share. We're doing the same thing with teachers when they come back next week. They're going to fill out a survey as well to see their perceptions. So we're going to share that data. We're going to get the same exact survey um, in June to see what changed. Um, we're in the process of creating school-wide wide goals. We're in the process of completing uh, very comprehensive um, data reports to share with key staff during PD. We had a wonderful PD session in, uh, in Connecticut that really prepared us for, uh, for the return of the teachers, and we we're hoping to, to mimic some of that um, methodology there. Um, we're going to be meeting with the BLT very shortly to update the CEP. Couldn't do it right away because I just came on. I can't rewrite it. I have to get everything, to get everybody together. Um, and I'm going to be continuing to mentor the, uh, the, the admin staff on all aspects of the Danielson observation process via the TeachScape. Whatever system the, uh, the district is using district-wide, we're going to make sure that that's translated into NFA so there's a continuity amongst the schools. And um, in order to inspire improved instructional outcomes, I'd like to use the NFA website to weekly highlight an excellent teacher, an excellent practice for that week, and uh, do it with photographs, and, um, and to really acknowledge the teachers um, for their very, very hard work day in and day out, because um, we aren't just teachers, we are teachers and parents and social workers. We're, we're every, we wear many, 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 many hats. So I want to I want to just have a celebration section for, for teachers because it'll also not only celebrate their achievements and their efforts, it'll also um, foster some healthy competition. With everybody want to be on the website. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. There's so much more, but I, I think I, I totally went over my time. Thank you very much for letting me uh, share uh, what we've been doing in the several weeks.
the board members have any questions for uh, Ms. Nodell or her staff that's here with her this evening? Yes. much for being here, Mr. Dotto, Ms. Siegel, Ms. Nodell, thank you for sharing. Very exciting, positive, wonderful things going on for our students, and I appreciate you taking the time to be here and share with us, share with the community, and we're going to continue to get it out there. Lots of wonderful things going on here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, Madam President, we have Forging and the school turnaround. The whole district turnaround. Yes. that we're, we're proposing to take and the alignment to all of the school you know, school initiatives that you just heard from Newburgh Free Academy and the alignment pre-K-12 with that as well. So when you, when you look at the work that we're going to be doing in school improvement, it's really making sure that there's an alignment, not just within our district, but to the state expectations. Because if there's an alignment to state expectations that's measured by the assessments, whether they be three through eight or, or New York State Regents exams, there's a great, great opportunity for our students to be successful. So if you backwards design it based on the expectations of the assessments and make sure that we offer programs for all students and opportunities for all students to be successful, our, our uh, opportunities for career and college preparedness are going to be greater. Uh, but that's kind of the direction that we're taking. So when you look at the fact that one of the, the major steps that we're going to take in school improvement is to coordinate and co-facilitate the development of a multi-year strategic plan for the district, setting rigorous targets, defining the district vision, and core values and beliefs. We've got to have a plan. We've all got to be on the same page. We've all got to be going down the same road. And we've got to monitor the implementation of those, those initiatives and strategies that we have to ensure that all students are being successful. And setting those specific benchmarks along the way will be critical in, in our path. Um, we are receiving guidance from the State Education Department as to what a district plan should look like. This is probably the first time that they're providing s extreme technical assistance on what a diagnostic assessment would look like of a school district. And under my leadership, we will conduct that diagnostic assessment within the district and within each of the schools that have been identified by the state as needing improvement. So when you look at the fact that in June there's, there were changes to the uh, ESEA or the, basically the regulations that guide the work of school districts, um, these changes will have an impact on our school district for the way that our schools are identified for, uh, in, in need of improvement or in good standing. One of the other things that we're working on is increasing the communication and explicit expectations between the district and the school. We're all working hard. We're all working very, very hard. Our teachers are doing the best that they possibly can. They're moving in a positive direction for the students that they're educating. As, as I would say, our senior staff is working, as well as our administration at the buildings. We've all got to be on the same page. There has to be that, that line of coordination and communication between each of us so that that district plan becomes a living document being implemented in the school. That takes me to the school plans. Each of the schools will be required to create a plan as well. 
So you've got a district plan that you're going to implement and hope to see positive change over the next three to five years. You have to have a building plan that's aligned 100% with that district plan and it's measured with those similar benchmarks. Uh, develop an administrative team in each school that will require increased instructional rigor in every classroom by ensuring successful implementation of the Common Core State Standards. We are well on our way with the Common Core Standards. We've done a lot of work this past year with developing foundational knowledge, but understanding the different shifts that we have to make in our school district with regards to the changes in English language arts and the changes in math. Uh, our, we have had a team up at the State Education Department this past month and they participated in the rollout of statewide curriculum modules. These curriculum modules were for pre-K through five in English language arts. The math did not come out uh, from the state yet, but they, they hope to have them out soon. Um, these particular modules, our staff is starting to take a look at. We're pulling them apart. We're seeing whether they're going to meet the Newberg standards. You know, we're not just going to take from the state because the state says, this is your curriculum. We have the power, we have the authority under your guidance as a board to say what is the local curriculum, what will drive what our kids need in Newburgh. So we're pulling those apart, we're analyzing those, and we're going to put together the district curriculum modules using those as a guideline. Uh, we're going to um, work with each of our school teams of, of our administrators, our principals, and our assistant principals to really talk about how do we create, as Maxine shared with you, what are those professional learning communities that we want to see in every one of our buildings. How do, we, how do we increase participation in decisions? How do we make sure that we're using data on a regular basis to drive all decisions? Whether it be for a program, whether it be for uh, implementing new positive behavior supports in the school, whether it be for an instructional strategy, whether it be for budgets, it's got to be driven by data, and it can't be one source of data. It's got to be perceptual data. It's got to be academic achievement data. It's got to be school process data. All of these different pieces put together a different lens for us to look through to make sure we're making the right decisions for our kids. And we're hoping to build the instructional capacity of our building teams and our building administration to, to make those particular decisions. We're going to monitor the student achievement and growth by embedding that cycle of data-driven inquiry. Maxine made reference to Connecticut. Connecticut was, was a leadership retreat that was really around understanding the power of data to drive these decisions. And we used actual data from the district over the past three years that talked about the performance in grades three through eight in English language arts and math. And we looked at graduation rates and we had some really difficult conversations around why are we in the situation that we're in? And let's be honest about this and figure out what it is that we're going to do so that each of the individual subpopulations have the opportunities in our school districts to be, district to be successful. <clears throat> That's the job of the administration. The job of the administration is to work with the teachers to develop those opportunities to make sure that those kids are successful. It can't be one particular group making these decisions. It's got to be data-based analysis with teachers, with administrators, and with senior staff in the district making those decisions based on that data. When you look at the coordination of the work of curriculum and instruction, as I said, my role has changed. I'm in school improvement. However, we've got to make sure that curriculum and instruction is aligned to the work that's being done in the schools. So if we're creating these curriculum modules, how do we know once those modules are done and CNI says, okay, they're done, they're completed, they're in a nice package, they're on the website, then there needs to be support at the building level to say, now take it to the next level. Let's see it in the classroom. What would it look like in the classroom? Let's walk through the classrooms and take a look and see what we want to see students engaged in. What do we want to see the administrators talking about during faculty meetings? How will school-based professional development be created? All of that's in line with what the district expectations are. So the, having me in the role of school improvement is going to support all the work that CNI is doing to support the building principles to bring to life in the school. Um, the other thing is to assist the curriculum and instruction department to develop a two-year uh, two academic intervention service response intervention plan. Those are plans that need to be reviewed on a, on a two-year basis. So we, we have to identify what's the continuum of support we have for those students that are not successful on the New York State assessments. We're required to do that. And it's not just saying that a student didn't do well on the ELA assessment or on the math assessment. Let's give them extra time to do math and reading. It's talking about why didn't the student perform well on that assessment? Was it an attendance issue? Are there other issues that are preventing that student from being successful? 
we need to move away from the fact that it's the issue is the child and move to we are creating barriers or there are barriers that have been created in our school district that are preventing these, these students from being successful. These, are, these students are our life. They're what we're all about. It, it's not, they're not the problem. There are barriers that we need to figure out, break down, so that these kids can be successful. That's the purpose of our academic intervention plan and our response to intervention plan. And then there will be the collaboration with Human Resources, and Human Resources will be working with C and I in a real team, team effort to really talk about what are the alternative education options in our school district for students who are not successful in a traditional educational environment. Uh, what, what are the different ways that we can implement a school within a school, a classroom within a school, outside opportunities? We need to explore all of those different possibilities for the students that we're teaching. Build the capacity of our leaders in the district with regards to cultural competency and diversity. We, we are in the process of implementing that. On September 7th, we have our first, not our first, but one of many kickoffs of the uh, the, the strategy that we're putting in place and working with New York University's Metro Center for Urban Education to, to talk about what is our obligation as a school district to educate all students in our district and what are the opportunities we have to provide so that these students can be successful. And Dr. Pedro Nogueira will be here and he will be talking to us directly about what are the district's responsibilities and also what are the community's responsibilities and how do we work together to do that. He's going to use a school district that has turned around uh, from, and it's either Brooklyn or the Bronx, but I'm almost positive it's Brooklyn, as, a, as an example uh, uh, to walk us through that particular piece. After the keynote, we will break out into an elementary team, a middle level team, and a high school team, and the topics of those conversations will be on culturally responsive education. And that's, that's the beginning of that particular piece. Uh, human Resources will be continuing that initiative throughout the year, so after the kickoff occurs on September 7th, there will be follow-up and there will be support provided in every one of our schools to keep that moving and keep that going. Just um, one of the things that the state has provided us, as I shared with you, is the fact that we have to have a diagnostic assessment. That diagnostic assessment that I'll be trained on uh, in October will be conducted in the, in the district, but it will also be done in each of our identified schools that are in the accountability system. It, it falls on six different tenets. Uh, district leadership and capacity. How well are we prepared to, to, to meet the needs of our students? Uh, school leader practices and decisions. How well informed and, and what's the instructional capacity of our school leaders to be able to pull this, this work well? Curriculum development and support. Are we creating curriculum to prepare students for the 21st century? Are we making sure that our students can go to any college that they select that they would like to go to. If they want to go into a career path, are we prepared to get them there? Teacher practices and decisions. Are we, are we aligning the, the, the best practices, the effective practices, the knowledge and skills of our teachers with the expectations of our curriculum? And if they need assistance, are we providing professional development to get them there? Student social and emotional development and health. Are we looking at the whole child, not just the academic? Because there are some times that the social emotional component of the student is what's preventing them from acquiring the knowledge of the, the curriculum or the academics. And then the family and community engagement. These are the six particular pieces that I'll be trained on to come back and do a diagnostic assessment of the school district and then also do the same thing with the team of teachers and administrators in each of the schools that are identified. Which takes me to how are the schools uh, aligned with the support that school improvement will be working with? We're, we're going to tier them based on their needs, based within the accountability system. Uh, the schools that, that we will be working very intensely with will be Temple Hill Academy, South Middle School, Heritage Middle School, and New York Free Academy. Schools that we will be working with in a very dedicated fashion will be Gidney Avenue Memorial, Horizons on the Hudson, Meadow Hill, New Windsor, and Galesgate. And schools that we're going to continue with the pace that they're at, keep them on track, keep them moving in a positive direction, and having uh, them work with some of the other schools to embed some of the practices that are working in their schools would be Bonville, Foster County, Gardenton. Um, my hope is that uh, on a monthly basis or every other month to give you an update as to where we're at with school improvement. This just gave you a quick overview as to where we're going, what we're doing, and if you have any questions, I'd be willing to answer. Questions for Mr. Ford? Ford?
Thank you, Mr. Fortune. Nice job, Mr. Fortune. once again to our presenters. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Our next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Hi, my name is James Reyes with the Newberg. At NFA. I've been teaching at NFA for about nine, eight or nine years. Probably about seven years ago, I was asked by Johnny Drink, uh, the career technical education director and art director, to start a broadcast class called Communication Through Broadcast, GBTV. And I started that seven years ago. Currently, today, there is over 100 students signed up at NFA Maine alone. And there's more signed up at North. Um, and there's a waiting list. Um, today you're going to vote on Q, Media Communication Teacher's Position, which will be replacing me. We'll be placing the program that I thank you, Mr. Pizzo. You bought me $10,000 worth of camera equipment last year that we have created more I think you mean the taxpayers. Sorry. <laughs> I can't take the credit. We created more projects than I could ever fathom. Over the last seven years, I've edited, the students have edited projects combined to over 1,200 TV shows. I've worked with solar car teachers, history teachers, science teachers. I mean, currently right now, there's a project on my computer waiting to be finished this summer about the Brook Trout program that started from Little Embryos to Trout that were released at uh, Black Rock. Earlier this year, you cut, you voted to cut an art position, which then pushed me to fill that position. I will great, gratefully fill that void. I'm mean, thrilled to be teaching art here at the district. Um, but I've had seven years of creating a program that turns away students. I've taught six sections because we just we, we can't we can't fill the void. The, the need for video and media in our school is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, I've volunteered and gone to games and events, and I've gone to three events in a long weekend. Um, and I'm not a part of that next year which I'm sad about. I mean, I, I, I have nothing prepared. I'm even surprised I came. Um, it would probably be better for me to just be quiet and accept, accept the position that I, I have to teach. But I have never came in front of you to speak. And I thought I should. I've collaborated with Mr. Van Voris, who is the GBTV North teacher. I've collaborated with Mr. Thompson, who is here a school tech teacher. I've collaborated with Mr. Dukine, who is a school media tech person. I've collaborated with endless amounts of teachers. You will see computers in the Black Box Theater, and Mr. Sandler will now start producing video because I saw such a huge need that we needed to start providing other areas with media because it was just too much. It was just too much for me and 100 students. Ms. Clifford has a massive amount of media needs. The science teachers, the history teachers. Um, 
It's phenomenal. I mean, we had a New York State observer who came, they come every year to observe our school, sat in my room, forgot his name, and he said he's never seen a program with such depth and diversity. We've combat anti-violence through the anti-violence program called Savvy. I mean, we're working with the NFA Word. Um, I'm not here pleading. I'm just saying I'm really disappointed that I'm not a part of it. Um, yes, I can be a part of it on my prep periods, and I can be a part of it in other areas. Um, how much can a person do? I mean, I've had five sessions for the last seven, no, six years of producing a show. Um, there's more I can say, but I just wanted you to know who I am, what I created. Um, I need to mention that we've been producing the um, Habitat for Humanity commercial that runs on cable. You're listening to my students' voice and their voiceover. You're seeing footage that they all competitively created and then were voted upon by Habitat for Humanity and then chose our commercials to run on Time Warner Cable. Um, so we've done a lot. Uh, granted, we can't put it on TV, we can't put it on the internet because of legality issues. Um, but I just wanted you to know who I am and what we've done. And when you create the media communications teacher position, know that there are two programs. There's one at NFA North, and there's one at NFA Maine. I really would like to be a part of one of those programs um, and continue working with the 100 students that are ready to work with me. Um, and I don't think they will be working with me. I think they'll be working with somebody else. But you're going to be making that choice tonight. And I mean no disrespect to our new principal, and Ms. Siegel, who helped me create a program, and Mr. Cobaletti, who was the, was the founding principal to make that program happen. Um, but I'm an asset, and I, I say that just because I know I am, because of what we've created, and because there's over 150 students waiting to work with myself, Mr. Van Boris, Ms. Siegel, all of us collectively within this media consortium. It, it's unbelievably gigantic. You tie all of these people together. I mean, just JRTC alone could have their own show. And it all would streamline through GBTV, and it would streamline through my computer. Through my computer, 1,200 times over the last seven years. And I'm out of it currently. I'm not a part of it, which I think is a disservice. My students will think it's a disservice, and the parents will think it's a disservice. But technically, I'm supposed to just kind of be quiet and fade away, which I don't really want to do. Um, thank you for you know, approving those cameras. We, we produced so much video last year because of the new technology and what um, you know, it brought to our program. And teachers were in and out of our room constantly throughout the year, borrowing those cameras, and then that meeting would come back and would be part of our show. So it's a monster. And I really, really think you should wrap your, everyone should wrap their heads on how to make that monster better above and beyond what any school has ever done. Um, and I'd like to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment on agenda items? Grace Bowles Schubert. I don't know the gentleman that just left the podium, but I do know this is the direction that we need to take our children. Our children are doing things that we can't imagine. And for us to be able to continue to give children the kinds of things that the 21st century calls for, I think we need to really be on board and keep this young man. Uh, like I said, I don't know him, I just happened to be here, and I looked down because, as all of you know, I'm all about 21st century, I'm all about technology, and that is what our students are about. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bowles. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on agenda items? Our next item on the agenda is from the board president. I have a resolution to approve the adoption of revised policies number 2460, pre-referral and intervention, and number 
5345, Concussion Management. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. And Ms. Duquette? Yes. Our next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. NFA renovation, NFA auto body, HOH renovation, NFA masonry, South Middle, South Middle School renovation, GAMS renovation, GAMS science room reno renovation, Bales Gate renovation, and that's project set one and set two and the Gardner Town Renovation Project. Can I have a motion? Second. So Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Kokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution B is to approve the receipt of the grant for the Newburgh Free Library. May I have a motion? Yeah. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Krokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Luchek? Yes. The next resolution is from uh, Mr. Velez. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Tonight we have eight facility requests for the district to approve. All eight groups meet all the requirements and they have all the paperwork in order with check insurance. Uh, I sent a package to, uh, to the board last Friday. Tonight I put in the spreadsheet with the total cost in each of your table. If you have any questions. It should be on in addition to your packet in front of your desk. Can I have a motion for this resolution? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Um, I was just wondering if our, our policies are um, adhered to this. For some, there's a lot that we're not charging. That's fine for community groups. But I thought some of our policies for facility use uh, stipulate certain amounts that need to be uh, paid for using the facilities. Is that something that may need to be changed? Mr. Velez? Mark. Um, in, in the spreadsheet tonight, some of the organizations that we charge for use of the schools are because they're using our schools during overtime hours or the weekend when the schools have open on regular time. We don't charge. Two weeks ago, in Millions Hangouts, we talked about that, and I uh, asked uh, Millions Hangouts chairperson to bring this to policy because uh, the numbers don't align with the cost that we have this day. So I think in the next policy meeting, we are going to discuss that. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Brokosh? Yes. Mr. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution D is to approve the district technology plan. Can I have a motion? No. Perfect. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. That concludes this session, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, item A is the recommendations from the Committees on Special Education. 
Can I have a motion? So, second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Rash? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement to purchase materials by approved special education providers and the funding sources IDA. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Redge. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item C is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Center for Discovery Funding Source IDEA Part 611. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Centris Group, SDAC, funding source IEA Part 611. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Krokosh? Yes. Ms. Dredd? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consulting agreement with Richard Tan, MD, funding source IDEA Part 611. May I have a motion? Hello. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kubitschek? Yes. Item F is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an initial service request agreement with Northern Westchester Closes to provide professional <coughs> development to staff members. Funding source, IDEA Part B, Section 611. Can I have a motion? Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Ash? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Noriega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate that today. The first resolution is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Dell Computer Corporation. The funding source is IDEA 611. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. The next resolution is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with handwriting without peers. The funding source is IDEA 611. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item C, resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with wireless generation. Can I have a motion? So 
Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the city of Newburgh. The funding source is 21st century programs. Can I have a motion? So Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item E is a resolution to approve subcontract agreements for universal pre-K. Can I have a motion? Second. <coughs> Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levinson. Uh, I have a few that uh, asked before. Um, how many openings do we have in the district for the pre-K? And I'm not looking to, to not have seats for students. I want to have as much as we can. But how many do we have on our week full with our seats? Like first. Right. I, I believe we have nine sections in district, Mr. Jensen. I believe that's correct. And, and right now, I believe we're, we're approaching capacity. Obviously, as the summer progresses, we we'll get more. You know, someone in August we get obviously more. But we are running great about the capacity of the Okay, that's not including the 217 that was just here. The capacity being within our building. Let me give you a clarification. We have nine classrooms, but they offer an AM and a PM, so it's 18 sections in, in district. Um, the, the UBK seats, obviously, um, we, we fill in district, but it's, it's funded by a UPK grant. So it, it's an opportunity for, for students based on what the parents, uh, what, what's in the best interest of the family and the parent to fill those seats. So, so they can fill these private pre-K seats before we fill ours. They can choose that, the parents? Absolutely. It's up to the parent where they would like to send their child. And again, what I, what I mentioned before, we, we have these contracts for X amount of students, not for up to that amount. I did, I did respond to that question, um, and, and I'll, I'll do it publicly at this point. Um, those, those contracts that you're approving this evening are for the number of seats that are available. If you divide the number of seats by the total number of the contract, you'll see that there's a, a pure per, pu per pupil rate. Okay, so it's based on enrollment, and if the students are enrolled and attend, they're reimbursed at that rate. They are not just given that amount of money. The students have to be sitting in that seat. They have to be enrolled and attend. Yes. We do 100% verification of that attendance as well. That on a, on a monthly basis. So those numbers that um, we've seen are up to, but we're not paying if those seats aren't filled. other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kluchek? Yes. Item F is a resolution to approve the purchase of leveled readers for the 2012-2013 school year at an amount not to exceed 160,000. The funding source is Title I, Part A. May I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item G is a resolution to approve the purchase of student assessment instruments for the 2012-2013 school year at an amount, at an amount not to exceed <coughs> 402000 The funding source is Title I, Part A. Can I have a motion? Motion. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? 
Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Gretch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item H is a resolution to approve the district debate team's tentative schedule for 2012-2013. Motion. <coughs> Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Ms. Gretsch. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Mr. Kuchek. Yes. The final resolution is a resolution to approve conference requests. And I have a motion. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Those are all the items from C and I. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent of Finance. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to declare books and equipment surplus and obsolete and to authorize disposition of the same. I have a motion. So <clears throat> Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokosh. I know I ask this all the time, but on um, equipment uh, <coughs> that is obsolete, are we, do, are we doing anything with them? Are we, once they're obsolete, are we then doing the green project where we're uh, getting reimbursement for those? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, we, we looked at several different options. And what we're looking at, actually, we're doing accommodation. Some things have gone out on auction, as we've uh, attempted in the past, um, if we feel that it's a, a viable piece of technology. And currently, what we're looking at is a recycler who pays the district by the pound for recycling those materials. Some of those materials can have some uh, toxic materials in them, <coughs> the CRT monitors and things like that, as an example. So uh, we're, we're now working with a recycler, and we're going to try that as a method of, uh, of disposing of our equipment. Because I know I brought it to the board uh, several months ago about the uh, green fundraiser where it's actually not by the town, but it's by the, um, by the individual component that you can send to them, which they then pay you for. I, I brought it up several months ago. And uh, I still get stuck, I'm sure we all do, on our, uh, our email about it. And, you know, they have the pricing right there. Ms. Uh, Mr. Pasella, I know that you had, um, I believe, Ms. Altman looking into that. Right, and I'll get a response from her. Uh, one of the issues that came up surrounding that was certain uh, products that we have or certain items that we have contain some sensitive materials. And I, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll certainly verify it, that one of the issues was that when they want it, when this company wants it, um, they want it fully cleaned. And that became a labor issue here in the district to fully clean them because to actually wipe all of them out was very labor intensive for each one of the machines to go there. But I'll verify that. What I believe that Mr. Jensen is referring to tonight, we get the actual guarantee from this company signed that they actually clean off, clean it off, and they dispose it properly according to the environment. Um, but I'll I'll research that again with Ms. Allman and, and respond back probably in an update. And I mean, thing as far as the auction, where is that auction? We have uh, we've set up eBay, Craigslist. We've done this for years. Okay, we don't we don't physically do an auction anymore because again it's labor intensive and we actually were losing money. Because I know we had it on the website there for a while. So we uh, I believe that we still do uh, certain items. I have to I'd have to check, but I know that we do have an eBay account. A lot of it goes out through eBay, and that's been very successful for us. Okay. And we'll get the account of that. Of. How much we've of the sold. money, right, the money that's being generated from that. Um, yeah, I believe that we can. Any other questions or comments? 
Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Mr. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kinchek. Yes. Item B is a resolution to accept the monthly bills and reports. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Walton. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. <coughs> Item C is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 school year contract with the Orange Holster BOCES. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. Massey. Yes. Ms. Kokoff. Yes. Ms. Ratch. Yes. Ms. Kokoff. Yes. Ms. Kuchet. Yes. Item D is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute the initial 2012-2013 school year contract with Orange Holster Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Walton. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Ms. Gretch. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchet. Yes. Item E is a resolution to authorize the Assistant Superintendent of Finance to sign binders for insurance renewal renewals effective September 1st, 2012. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Krogoff. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchet. Yes. Item F is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a contract for the 2012-2013 school year with Marshall and Sterling Programs, Incorporated. Reserve to the general fund. I have a motion. So moved. Sir. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item H is a resolution to transfer funds the amount of five hundred thousand from the unemployment reserve to the general fund. Can I have a motion? No. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokoff. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item I is a resolution to transfer funds the amount of one million two hundred thousand from the workers' compensation fund reserve to the general fund. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Woodhull. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, Mike, mm -hmm. what do we have left in the workers' compensation fund after we transfer this million to? Well, I don't. I don't have the exact amount. Um, and that will be reported to you when the final audit of the school year is done. We're currently in the audit right now, and that report should be done by Nugent Hausler in the next month. So you'll have a full report of all of the reserve funds uh, at that point. I can give you the balance as of now, but it's certainly going to change. And that was planned by the board during the budget process. We haven't started collecting the tax.
finances yet. They will be getting their bills very shortly for September. And, and then we'll have some coming back. Other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Item J is a resolution authorized payment of property tax refund pursuant to court orders. The amount is $90,157.85. I have a motion. No. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Brad. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Item K is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with the city of Newburgh to provide a community resource officer for Newburgh Free Academy. And Madam President, this wasn't discussed uh, during the public workshop a couple weeks ago, but I will explain it. This, I did receive this contract from the city of Newburgh Council that they did authorize this to be effective beginning September 1st through August 30th of next year. Uh, during the budget process, this was budgeted for, it was discussed as part of the, the budget and it is appropriated in the, in the general fund operating budget. Um, the agreement is the same amount at $100,000 per year. The contract is the same as last year, um, but in order for that to start and be effective, this needed to be addressed prior to the, year, the school year starting. So that's why I asked to have this brought in for this meeting tonight. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Pasella. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through K, we have on the professional side, change of locations, change of status, return from leave of absence, resignations, retirement, and on the civil service side, we have appointments, change of location, leave of absence, change of status, resignation, termination, and former employees who passed away. And Madam President, there's a request to separate item B for a separate vote. I have a motion to separate item B for a separate vote. So moved. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Prokosh. Yes. Ms. Red. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. So the first vote would be A through K. Can I have a motion? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Lucek? Yes. And next would be Resolution B, which is professional change of status. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Brokaw. I have to table this for discussion in the second session. And I have a motion to table Resolution B from the Human Resources Agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Redd? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution L is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Omni Medical Care for bloodborne pathogens exposure services. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? 
No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Trokoff? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution M is to terminate the employment of a cleaner pursuant to the provisions of Section 71 of the Civil Service Law. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution N is to abolish a full-time technical education teaching position and the creation of a full-time reading teaching, excuse me, reading teacher position. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Walton? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Resolution O is to create a half-time reading teacher position. The funding source is Title I. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Gresh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution P is to abolish a full-time social studies teacher position and to create a full-time special education teacher position. No effect on the general fund. Can I have a motion? Move. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. yes. Resolution Q is to create a full-time media communication teacher position. Funding source is the fund balance. Can I have a motion? No. Can I have a motion to table this item? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. for appointment depending on enrollment and, and attendance to the 2012 extended school year program positions. These are the positions that did the proctoring and scoring. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Adopt the revised 2012-2013 district calendar. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> oh, Mr. Lawson. Um, October was Harry uh, Lawson. Is that not going to be something that's going to be on the calendar? Generally, specific designations of a month don't appear on this calendar. It would appear on what we call the wall calendar. It's a huge calendar that is developed by CNI, and it would appear on that. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard, yes. Mr. Lawson, yes. Mr. Levenstein, yes. Mr. Lewis, yes. Mr. McAfee, yes. Mr. Stolkoff, yes. Mr. Scratch, yes. Mr. Woodhall, yes. Mr. Kuchek, yes. Resolution T is to designate individuals for appointment depending on enrollment and attendance to the 2012 Extended School Year Program. This was the Regents Review classes. Can I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Yes. Resolution U is to approve the appointments 
for the development of the Comprehensive Education Plan at Temple Hill Academy. Can I have a motion? Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Lucek? Yes. The next resolution is to appoint the 2012-2013 <coughs> fall athletic coaching positions. I have a motion. Questions or comments? <coughs> Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Walton. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Solkoff. Yes. Ms. Red. Yes. Mr. Woodhall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Resolution W is to approve the appointment of the district security manager position through June the 30th, 2014. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution X is to authorize the board president to execute, excuse me, execute a settlement agreement regarding SED case number 19500. I have a motion. No. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. 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 Resolution Y is a resolution to approve a tenure recommendation for a teacher. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution Z is for your information only. It's an upcoming tenure recommendation for a teacher. And at this point, Mrs. Kuchek, I need a resolution to add items double A and double D to the agenda. Can I have a motion to add resolutions double A through double D to the agenda? Oh. Roll, roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution AA is a professional appointment. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution double B, additional professional change of status appointments. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokop. I'd like to have this move to take the session along with B. Can I have a motion to table the resolution double B? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution double C are additional professional change of locations. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. 
Resolution double D is a professional return from a leave of absence. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? No. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Mr. Jack? Yes. That concludes my items. Thank you, Mrs. Limer. At this time, we will have public discussion and comment on non-agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on non-agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address.
I, I understand that the, the bus driver was reprimanded uh, by his company, but I'm asking the board to direct the bus companies to require retraining for all of the drivers with regard to drop off policies and practices before the start of the school year. I'm sorry, who do I give you? You can give it to Mr. McCoy, the board clerk. Thank you, Ms. Politi. serving with over the years and for the edification of those that I did not serve with, that exceptions to the transportation policy have been made in the past. Uh, two come to mind, Windsor Academy in New Windsor and Ivy League Preschool in New Windsor. The large school buses drop children off in the private parking lot of Windsor Academy every day after school. Uh, Pre-K buses, I believe, pick up and drop off both in the parking lot at Ivy League. So I'm not sure why Young and Unique is being treated differently um, than these schools, but I hope that the members will come up with a solution to the problem before a child is seriously injured or killed. To quote Mr. Fortune tonight, these students are our life. And I know that this board takes very seriously their responsibility to keep all of our children safe while traveling to and from school, and I look forward to hearing your solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Politi. Good evening, my name is Jean Daly. I'd like to just make three positive comments tonight. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, first of all, I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to congratulate the district, the supervisor and administration, union, and the MTA for our wonderful workshop that we had today. It was the first time ever we had a collaborative effort where we spoke about our code of conduct in the same place at the same time, so all of the administrators and teachers could hear the same thing. There are changes that will still happen because this is a living document, so our work isn't done yet, but I think today was a great start to a collaborative effort. My second comment has to do with um, hearing our speakers today talk about our community-based organizations. And I want you to know that the NTA also feels very strongly about including the CBOs in what we do. The four officers recently visited the Newburgh Armory, Newburgh Armory Unity Center, and we were very impressed with what they are proposing to do for our students. And we are investigating ways that we, the NTA, can support these educational services through the Newburgh Armory. You were uh, at the board of directors for the Newburgh Armory Unity Center. Your visit was um, communicated with us and uh, the fact that you're looking to partner and, and work with us. So thank you. You're welcome. And lastly, I just want to congratulate the district on the beautiful town of Newburgh library branch that's at the Newburgh Mall. I was extremely pleased when I saw it. I couldn't get over the brand new books, and I thought it was an excellent opportunity for our families and our children to have an alternative venue for utilizing our library services. And I just hope that the good word gets out further once school begins. And tomorrow, um, we have their official grand opening at one o'clock, so anyone that would like to join us, we will be there celebrating that branch in the uh, town of the Newburgh Mall. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Daly. Grace Bowles. 
Uh, the children of Newburgh and Lawrence City School District are ready to go to school. They are emailing, they're texting, they're twittering, and they're doing whatever else they do to tell everyone that they, are, they want to go back to school. They don't want to go back to school on September the 10th. They want to go back to school on September the 5th or the 6th. So when we know that the first couple of days, students are receiving books, they're getting the instructions from teachers and et cetera. So being a district that is academically deficient, I think we could have used those three days or at least two of those days to prepare the students. But the following week, they have a full week of school and then they're off two weeks. And being a retired teacher, I know that it's almost like starting all over again. Three days. Three days. They're all two days. Yeah, they're all two days, right. They, they have a week of school. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they're off two days. Then it's like starting all over again. They do those three days. Then they're off two days for the weekend, and then they come back. And it's like, okay, kids, let's get together. It's time to go to school. Um, I would like to also thank you. I'm beginning to hear a lot of that word technology in the presentations, in the uh, minutes that I saw online, and I am really grateful. But I don't know whether any of you saw the program Fixing Our Schools. Did anyone see that program on TV? Fixing Our Schools? You saw it? Okay. You know, this would be a nice time for the board to order dinner, sit down, and watch that program. Okay? Um, I watched a program called Fixing Our Schools. Maybe some of you watched the program. The schools <coughs> shown have invested heavily in technology. And as a, as a result of that, the students are sorry. One of the schools was in Arizona. The other was in a poverty-stricken town in Morrisville, North Carolina. The principal sat at his desk and he looked around. He said, I see a PC, I see a laptop, I see an iPad, and I have a cell phone. How can I use this to energize my students, to make my students want to come to school? Well, he did it. He did it a little at a time because we know that technology <coughs> is expensive. But because this is what these kids live nowadays, for us to tell them to leave their technology at home, leave it in their lockers, keep it out of sight, it just invites trouble. And someone of authority walks up to a student and says, give that to me because you have it out. Well, you know the result. Kids are not giving up their technology without fighting. When especially when teachers are walking around with gadgets in their ears, talking on their cell phones in class, and excusing themselves to carry on conversations when they should be teaching. Now, I know what's happening, and you know what's happening. Districts are purchasing massive amounts of computers, iPads, laptops. We are 12 years into the 21st century, and most of our classrooms remain equipped for the Industrial Revolution. You need only to look to your teachers, and they can create the programs that will be shared. You buy the equipment, and believe me, the teachers will follow through with it. In that program, Fixing Our Schools, the purpose was to put laptops into all children's hands. 50% of the third world student population don't go to school, but they were putting laptops into their hands, and they, and with a satellite dish, they, in Nigeria and India, these students were not only educating themselves, they were educating their parents. These students, students don't need teachers to teach them technology. Let me just give you a few examples. If you go out to J.C. Penney's, they're walking around with iPads. Uh, the cash registers are still there, 
but they're walking around with iPads. You go to the, um, uh, when you get up to pay for it, it's, your order's already there. Commercials are not black and white and boring, but they're colorful, upbeat, and techy. Remember I asked you years ago about Mandarin? Well, we need Mandarin. We started out trying to get German, but I don't think we have that now. There's a definite problem when you will not allow, after 12 years, our district to move into the 21st century, and even kindergartens know how to use laptops. And did I see when you were buying workbooks? Shouldn't you, shouldn't you be buying something else? You put, a, you put the kindergarten on a workbook? Most classrooms have one computer to take attendance and receive district emails. Please do not use the excuse of students not having access to computers or technology. They got those $300 sneakers, they can get a computer. I would like to walk into a classroom where students are using PCs, laptops, and interacting with each other as the teacher is doing one-on-one -on -one instruction. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bowles. Mr. Jensen, I'm just going to ask you if you could please um, speak to the one-on-one uh, -on -one computing initiative that the district has undertaken with our sixth graders this year. Sure. Uh, the district, uh, after a, a year of planning, has uh, embarked upon a one-to-one -one computing uh, scenario at the sixth grade across the four schools, the, the two middle schools and the two hill schools at the sixth grade level. Approximately 900 iPads are, are available. Uh, on 40 carts with 30 in a cart roughly and um, we'll also be using uh, presentation devices such as apple tv so that we'll be able to teacher will be able to walk around untethered in the classroom and present and actually would be able to say for instance if i wanted a, a student to present their material with a with a couple of clicks on the on the um on the ipad or a couple of hand swipes uh, would be able to project what they are presenting and what they're doing on their iPad. So if I saw something that was done that was very innovative by a student, I could share that as well. So it's really designed to make the, uh, the classroom much more interactive and the students much more participant in the learning process. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose, considering matters made confidential by FERPA, and to discuss matters regarding the employment history of particular individuals. The board may take action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Roll call. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levinstein. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. McAfee. Yes. Mr. Kokosh. Mr. Redd. Yes. Thank you all for being here this evening with us. We need a motion to bring back HRB back to the table. I have a motion to bring resolution HR resolution B back to the table. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. <laughs> Can you read? The next one. Resolution. Can I have a motion for? Now that you brought it back to the table, you yep. can actually vote, vote on it. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to read the resolution. It says professional change of status. Okay. Has it changed at all? No. 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 So, so you could just vote it. Uh, can I have a motion for resolution B, professional change of status? So, second. second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you. 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 Roll call. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhull? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mary, I mean, Yes. Uh, the same. Uh, can I have a motion on um, resolution Q? So moved. Second. It's the creation of a, a full time media communications teacher position. Yeah. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Can I have a motion? <laughs> yeah, Ms. Brush. <laughs> Ms. Resch. Ms. Resch. Yes. <laughs> Are you rushing by? <laughs> Ms. Resch. Can I have a motion to bring um, resolution double B, professional change of status, back to the table? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Ms. He got me this <laughs> Can I have a resolution to approve resolution? Can I have a motion to approve resolution double B, professional change of status? So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Prokop? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Now you guys can. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Guys. <laughs> <laughs>